Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back. So, in the last video, we were talking about uh, editing some of the files in this uh, pipe uh, flow snapping X mesh. And uh, if you're not sure what it is, uh, let me run through it with you for the benefit of those who uh, haven't uh, seen this case before. Okay, haven't seen this uh, pipe flow snapping X mesh case, uh, which I've used in my last tutorials. Uh, come, let's take a look. So there are two there are two files in this. Uh, it was previously used for turbulent uh, piezo phone kind of uh, operation. Uh, so the first thing is mesh generation. So what does mesh generation do? First thing it does the all clean script, which is just cleaning up the directory, and then it will have a run function. You should know what these run functions are. All right. So the first thing uh, I do is to restore the zero directory, and what's in the zero directory? That's all the initial uh, conditions and boundary conditions then we run block mesh okay so we create a block and we use snappy hex mesh which i have a cylindrical kind of a stl file you should already know what this is uh, so yeah i have a cylindrical stl file then i use snappy hex mesh to create a cylindrical kind of a mesh so topo set uh, that will uh, tell us uh, tell open from hey where is the entrance and the exit uh, so it selects uh, a bunch of faces or cells that I want to designate as the inlet and the other one I want to designate as the outlet. So after selecting um, a group of uh, a set of faces or cells, usually it's faces for the patch, it will make a patch from it, which is called create patch. And then we can use, uh, we can assign boundary conditions to those patches. Yep, and then you have a touch navy pipe dot form. That's the standard. Uh, so that you can see the geometry. So, and we look at the run file. Now, currently, it's just a piezo form file. So it runs application of the piezo form, and this is in case. Well, in case there's this log dot piezo form, uh, this file cannot run. So I just circumvent it by doing this. Uh, it's a very uh, cheap uh, workaround. Uh, but. Yeah, so just be wary if I'm running this, well, if you're running this kind of script, it will erase all the previous data. So you've got to uh, change the change the name of this. Uh, if you want log data, you uh, should change the name of this log.piezo form into something else. And then you continue running. All right, so that is the that is the brief introduction. So we are using, we are using a simple cylindrical uh, STL file to create the mesh or the shape. So next thing uh, we are talking about, we want to edit some of the system files. Okay, so I'm going to do the system files, and there are three things I want to edit at least. First is the FE schemes, then FE solutions, then the control dict. So let's take a look at the FE schemes from Laplace Inform, and let's see what, just have a refresher of what we need to actually change. Okay, oh, FE schemes all right and our vifv schemes here all right so i'm just going to make a uh, i'm just going to make a additions instead of uh, deleting all of this so technically we don't need this gradient of p okay we don't need this gradient of p uh, because there's no pressure to speak of but uh, we we'll just leave it there in case we want to use it later. So in the gradient schemes, uh, there's this gradient of T that is missing. Oops. Okay, let me extend this back. And there's no control Z. Haha. <laughs> okay, this is the better way to do it. Now write um I escape and write it in. So you can see that there's no gradient of T here previously. I'm just adding that entry in. Divergence of schemes, default there's none. Uh, I'll just leave this here because these become redundant. Redundant. And then the Laplacian schemes. Um, okay, in Laplacian schemes, we have this. Uh, we have this uh, entry here. So we'll need to do Laplacian dt and t. This is the thermal diffusivity and temperature. So Gauss linear corrected and we'll leave it as that 
okay and interpolation schemes are linear SN gradient schemes instead of orthogonal uh, yeah it might be non orthogonal maybe you should have uh, changed that before but we'll use the corrected okay and why is this corrected this is to make sure that for non orthogonal mesh for example block mesh we we'll usually have an orthogonal mesh where the faces are all 90 degrees to each other but in a non orthogonal mesh we will need to correct for this so we'll use this correction uh, this corrected thing to you know take take that into account and yeah i am going to save and quit so wq and let's take a look at the next one let's look at fv solution yep vi fv solution here so uh, again we'll have uh, another entry we need to add so i'm just going to add it below here and the solver shall be called t hmm, i think i forgot to add a semicolon just now i'm going to save this and quit first let me check if i have a semicolon there the semicolon is very important so the semicolons are important so make sure all of these uh, all have semicolons because there's a C++ code. Okay, so all have semicolons. Alright, so I'm going to have my T here. And I'm going to put my solver. I'm going to put PC, PCG. Precondition. DIC. Whatever that means. Doesn't matter. Of course, I can do a copy and paste. But I'm just going through each of these one at a time. So we see what I'm doing. So again, we have a T, and then we have the solver preconditional tolerance and relative tolerance. And I'll need an extra entry. I'm going to save first by pressing colon W. I'm going to put a simple. Simple. Okay. And then I'm going to open bracket and close bracket. Okay, non n number of non -ortho orthogonal correctors that will be two. Okay, that's it. That's all we need to do for these two files. And let's take a look at uh, control dict. So let's see how long we want to run this. Okay, so application of course is not echo form anymore. I mean we can leave it as that, but for the sake of neatness. We just do the plus in form. So uh, that in case we run, we have a, in case we ever have a run script that looks like this. In case we have a run script that says run application, then get application. So where's this application? It is in this control dict. Yeah, in case we use that kind of script, it is compatible. But if we're gonna run run the plus in form by itself, then it doesn't really matter. So. Okay, it starts from the latest time, it starts from zero, it goes all the way. Instead of 1000, maybe we just do 100 seconds. And we'll keep the right interval since it's 10 times shorter, 500. And yeah, let's see whether, let's see whether uh, there's anything different in the control dict. Okay, so everything else looks okay. There's a... Uh, uh, start time, end time. Uh, okay, it looks looks pretty okay. Um, just don't know whether you know the time step is really too big. I can deal with that later. We'll see whether this code runs first. Then we can. Okay, let me put QA. Yeah, I mean uh, nothing really much different from this. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to quit yet. Let's change this back to five hundred. Yeah, then we'll quit. All right, so we just do a dry run and see what bugs come up. Then we can solve the things from there. So let's do a mesh generation. All right. So let's see if our boundary conditions are correct. So V I T, and we have a. Uh, bottom patch which is the hot end a wall with uh, adiabatic wall that's why it's zero gradient 
and the top patch is this much. Of course, uh, yeah, we can change this to have a different heat flux. We can talk about that in future videos, but first thing first, let's do a dry run. Alright, so we do a mesh generation. So you're going to clean up the case, run block mesh, run stamping X mesh, blah 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 blah. It should take very short. Hmm. So let it run a while. Then next thing, instead of uh, running a uh, piece of foam, as was the previous case, we'll run a Laplacian foam instead. And we'll see what the outputs become. Alright, so we probably want to fast forward. And about a minute later, or actually less than a minute, it was already done. So let's take a look at the all run, or the, the run file I have put. So instead of a piezo phone, we use Laplace info. So the log will be in the log Laplace info. Yep, so... Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna edit this run file. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so run file's been edited, so yep, let's do the run then. And I'm gonna put an end file not an end file, an end at the back to run it in parallel. So yep. We can go and look at the log, the plus info. And let's take a look. It will read the field T, it will read the transport properties, it will read all this all of this. So it's calculating rather quickly. So 0 0.5 seconds in. And let's take a look again. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down. It's at 3.4 seconds. So, um, okay, at least, at least this, uh, this, um, what do you call that? This simulation's running just fine. Um, let's see the zero. Oopsie. CD zero. Yep, so, um, it's gonna do all that stuff. Uh, nothing too uh, brilliant about it. So, just gonna let it run. I'm uh, going to fast forward this again and we'll see the results in a bit. Alright, so we are about 25 seconds into the simulation. Not going to waste any time. We're going to run an open para view to see what the results are like. So we should get, we should see the temperature from the hot end uh, no, rising towards the cold end. Uh, let's take a look. I'll use this first. I'll navigate. I'm going to navigate towards uh, the heat transfer. I'll open this snappy bike dot form. Yeah, I'll change the name to something else. So we have T, and this is at twenty. Yeah. See whether there's a hot end. Yeah, that's it. There is a hot end, and it's slowly going to conduct towards the cold end. So let's look at 25. You can see the conduction is slowly, slowly happening, and it might take a while. Okay, it might take a while, but it it will happen. All right. So this is. Let me zoom in. It's a very difficult thing to see properly from this angle. Let's do a reset. I'm going to do a reset, reset, reset. Yeah, it's much better. Okay, 12.5. Let's take a look at 25 seconds. You see the the temperature is rising. Okay. Temperature is rising and it's like propagating towards the other end. So this is what Laplacian form does. 
Yeah, it's a conduction solver. Pretty rudimentary. So over time, you should see the whole tube getting more and more red. And of course, if the thermal diffusivity we change it, the rate of that will change. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too much to worry about Laplace info. Okay, so that's all we have to do. We just change a few solvers, change the FV solution, we change the files. It will run very nicely. And let's see whether there's more data available. Okay, thirty-seven point five now. That's the third. Um, the third. That's the third one. So, let's take a look at the temperature again. All right. So, we'll go to thirty-seven point five, and then you see the temperature actually propagating. The heat actually conducting from this end towards the other end. Uh, and I suspect even at 100 seconds or 1000 seconds, you won't see the whole tube being heated up yet because it's a very slow-ish process, this conduction uh, across a 40 meter tube. Can you imagine how long that is? 40 meters? Okay, so that's a that's a pretty big tube. Um, but yeah, that's all, that's all I have um, for Laplace Info. Um, uh, yeah, so it's a very simple solver. Probably in the next videos, next few videos, we'll want to move on to convection as well. But the solvers are slightly more complicated. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.